Welcome back to AMSA Stadium, East London. Viani Bungu, Thomas Mashaba is upon us. Remember, they're both champions, of course, but Bungu's crown is at stake. It's the featherweight title, the IBO featherweight title. Thomas Mashaba holds the IBO uh, junior featherweight crown. And uh, there's the belt that we've been speaking about, and it looks like uh, Viani Bungu, the beast, at work in the dressing room, just making sure that uh, sweat is on and he's not going to get caught cold in the opening round. It's not all that cold here this evening. There's a chill in the air, I suppose, inside the marquee, but uh, nothing really to complain about. Uh, the crowd, not quite what we were expecting. No, look at, it's not too bad. They filtered in over the night, and uh, you know, it's quite a big uh, marquee, so possibly got as much as we'd get into the uh, Orient Theatre. But uh, it's a little bit disappointing. We, you know, local boy, we expected so much more support for Vianney Bungu. And possibly this will be his farewell fight. I can't see him carrying on, win or lose. But uh, he's been a credit to the game. And it's a great pity he hasn't got a good send-off here from the local fans. And you feel if he were to win tonight, he may well call it quits as well? Uh, I reckon so. Nick, you know, uh, he's getting on 38, you know. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't take a leaf out of the Bernard Hopkins well, School of Boxing and keep going keep into going the 40s? 40s, possibly, you know. But you never know. You never know. There you go. It's looking pretty full over that side. No, Nick, it's not too bad. It's much better than we expected. We were a little bit worried early in the night. You know, there are very few people in the arena. But I think the people having their supper decided to come along uh, to see some good boxing. Well, the ring is looking pretty full at the moment. A number of dignitaries there that will be introduced by uh, Pumlani. Welcome back to Absa Park, ladies and gentlemen. This is AA2 Boxing Promotions. We are live and exclusive on the Channel of Champions, bringing you the fights of your life tonight. We're bringing you the return of the piece. Of course, the main part now to come, Vianney Pungu up against Thomas Mashabam. But before we get on with that, a couple of dignitaries to be introduced who have joined us in the ring here tonight. First, the director in the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, Mr. Quinty. Let's give him a big hand, please. And of course, on my extreme right, I will introduce from Supersport the people who made tonight's show to be possible. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the head of channels at Supersport, Mr. Andre Fencher. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, other sponsors of tonight's event, Cat Leger, we have the regional manager of Cat Leger, Mr. Andrew Bunningham. And ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure for me to introduce the executive mayor of Buffalo City, Mr. Cindy Sile McLean. <laughs> and last and certainly not least, he escaped what I normally do to chairman of boxing South Africa, as I always request them to give us a fantastic ring walk. But ladies and gentlemen, let's announce and introduce to you the new chairman of boxing South Africa, yes, Kit Dynamite, Dali Mbafu. <laughs> and I also like to acknowledge a couple of South African champions at ringside. Ali Funega is here, Kosnati Joy is in Pure Vejegam. They're also here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event. Let's welcome into the ring the challenger, Thomas. Mashaba! Challenger always gets to come in first. Thomas Mashaba under that hood. What is going through that mind, Ron? Well, I don't know. That's a, that's a big one for him, Nick. You know, he's never had the big time. He only had that fight against Macaulay. We won the time. He's won a South African title, but he's never been the same league, or the same level as Vianney uh, Bungle. That's not an easy one for him from the nerve point of view. Coming here tonight, he's having his 21st fight as a professional, Thomas Mashaba. He was very impressive in beating Zelani Macaulay to take the junior featherweight title. Macaulay really is quite a class fighter, and I think most people are expecting Macaulay to win that one, but uh, Mashaba took him apart. Well, that was a major upset. And it must have been a big confidence booster for uh, Thomas Mashaba, too. And convinced him that he's got a chance this evening against Vianney Gungu.
So Mashaba in the ring, ready to go. And that's the distinct here tonight, that IBO belt, the IBO featherweight belt. Well, I think that's Mashaba's junior featherweight belt. Is it? Oh, well, uh, there's a belt. It's like Dick, one of them, eh? Ungu will bring in his featherweight belt nope. very shortly. And Mishabe ladies can, and gentlemen, let's he welcome he take the out. IPO featherweight champion into the ring, Vuyani Bungu! And no surprise, the bigger applause in the marquee goes up for this man, Vuyani Bungu. He's been a pro since 1987, that's how long he's been around. Long, long, long career, Nick. 18 years of pro. When the history of South African boxing finally gets written, he well, will be one of the uh, the absolute legends of the sport. I'm running at the moment, Nick. I'm just waiting for the publisher. That's what I mean. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all rise for the singing of our national anthem. Let us all rise, please. <laughs>
gentlemen, this bout is for the International Boxing Organization featherweight title. Your officials for this bout are as follows. Your referee is Richie Davis. Your judges, Hunt, Cross and Erasmus. Ladies and gentlemen, your fight supervisor tonight is Pacho Handim. Your ringside doctors, doctors Bungane and Votlegam. And your timekeeper, Nangoku Tetani. Introducing first, fighting out of the red column. He wears the navy blue and white trunks. He weighed in at 56,65 kilograms. He is the former South African junior featherweight champion. Tonight, he moves up in weight. His title, the IPO junior featherweight belt, is not on the line tonight. He's moving up in weight to challenge Vuyani Pungu. Let's put our hands together for Thomas Masilasi Mashaba. And fighting out of the blue corner, he wears the white and navy trunks. He weighed in at 57,15 kilograms. He holds the South African record. 13 successful title defenses of a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former South African junior featherweight champion. He is the former IPF junior featherweight champion of the whole world. You can't We are the peace. Boxer, center of the ring, please. And here's Richard Davis with final instructions. Okay, fellas, you both had your instructions in the dressing room. Give me a good, clean contest. Make sure you behave yourselves, defend yourselves at all times. God bless you both. Good luck. IBO referee Richie Davies with the uh, last minute instructions there. Well, you can feel a lot of tension here in the uh, arena tonight, Nick. Uh, a lot of on the shoulders, of, a lot on the shoulders of Yanni Bungu. I think it's a fascinating contest because, as I say, if it was just a question of sheer class and what you've done and who you fought, this man in picture of Yanni Bungu would win this hands down. But he is 38 years of age now. Thomas Mishalba is younger. He's uh, hungrier, possibly, at this stage of his career. He, he's extremely fit. He's trained at altitude, obviously, in Johannesburg and come down to the coast for this fight, which uh, might have some say later in the fight if it gets that far. But in terms of being a, a sheer quality fighter technician, you can't beat Bungu. He really has been terrific. Well, that's Bungu in those white trunks with the uh, blue band. And Thomas Trishaba, the uh, IBI junior featherweight champion. Uh, his title's not a stake tonight. They're so fighting up for the IBI featherweight title. He's in those dark blue trunks. Well, good start here from Mishaba, he really means business. He's digging in, oh, a good little uppercut there from Bionic Bungu. Well, that was the first punches he throws in the fight. The uppercut's one of the hardest punches to time in boxing, and straight into it goes Bionic Bungu. That's tremendous. Mishaba made a strong start, though, trying to make a statement in this opening round. He's the younger fighter, Mishaba. Right hand to the body scored by Mishala. Bungu can't afford to take too many of those. Be part of uh, Mishala's strategy, just to wear Bungu down. As I say, the longer the fight goes, it may well play into the hands of Thomas Mishala. deal with the loss of his uh, father in between mm -hmm. fights. Uh, Very sad, Nick, you know, uh, but he said, I'm fighting for my father. That's, uh, May well strengthen his resolve, as you say. But it's very difficult for him to pull back the years, Nick. He's that big factor, that's the age factors against Vianne Bungu out tonight. And that was the point I was making uh, just a couple of minutes ago, that yes, the sparring and training may go well, but you only know how old you are once you get into yeah, the ring so right. and you're involved in a genuine fight. So right, but... And he's got a genuine fight on his hands now against Mishara. Bungu very cagey in this opening round, though. Oh. Not letting too much uh, happen at the moment, as far as he's concerned. Just trying to soak up Mishara and get a feel for what he's all about. Oh, you can hear the crowd go, they're all a pro Bungu crowd.
Yes, we shall have a summer from home at the moment. Crowd get behind every punch he throws too. Good finish to the round for the beast. Well, he's done well, Nick. Uh, you know, I thought the shot was the round well, but then you finished the round uh, with a flurry of punches. The round of two halves, the first half belonging to Mashaba and Bungu coming on well at the bell. A little uppercut, Nick, it was, that was classic, you know, when he got that little uppercut in the inside and then he was uh, catching uh, Mashaba with left and right head. But Mashaba, this worries me that those body shots he digs in can be only take too many of those. It's laying down in the later round. As he goes to round two of this uh, IBO featherweight championship fight down at East London at the Buffalo Park Stadium. Because Bungu's no stranger to having to deal with younger fighters. His last fight, in, it wasn't in 2004, and that's another thing he's had to deal with, a bit of a layoff. A lot of limb rust, Nick. 2003 took on Takalani and Globu, who was also a young South African fighter, a very strong fighter too, and Bungu got the better of him, Globu, there. I say the Buffalo Stadium, it's an Absa Stadium. Apologies to Absa. But um, Michelle has also been out for a little while. You know, he's uh, always got a bit of ring rust. He hasn't fought since he won that uh, RBI Junior featherweight title. Which is about a year ago. Well, that's May 22. So we're talking uh, more than a year. Shaba, left hook, fires in with a good short right hand. That's poor Bungu. Bungu momentarily backed on the ropes, decides that's not a good place to be. Well, Bungu's just got to stick and move. He mustn't fight for Shaba's fight. Well, this is what Mashaba wants. What do you see as Mashaba's fight? This is a fight. He's fighting now, coming forward. Coming forward and outworking Bunga. No, that's, that's right. That's it. And that's, that's what Bunga doesn't want. He's got to get on his bicycle. Oh, good right hand scored by Mashaba. Stinging right hand. Bunga with head movement, but he's not slipping all these punches. Mashaba really uh, punching for all he's worth at the moment. He's trying to get an early finish. He's very careful, don't punch himself out. Well, that's the thing with Mashaba, he's so fit, I don't think he could punch himself out. He's just uh, really taking a fight to Bungu's man. Another good right hand too. I think surprising the champion in the second round. Right. He's picked up the tempo. And Bungu's not going with him at the moment. Another big right hand there from Mashaba. Should Bungu lose tonight, I think it really would bring down the curtain on a, on a very fine career, obviously. Oh, looking very strong in these uh, early rounds. Oh, very confident too. Confidence uh, starts out in the second round for Thomas Mashaba. And he's in those dark blue trunks. We only Bungu in the uh, white trunks. And a lot of punches have also been taken on the gloves and on the side. And moving aside the punches by uh, Bungu. Just backed off a bit now is uh, Thomas Mashaba. In his younger days, this was the sort of fight that Bjorni Bungu could fight. He always such a fit fighter, could really outwork fighters, as he did Kennedy McKinney when he took that tough fight in 94. And uh, those uh, body shots there from Mashaba. He's got it. <laughs> but the only has a skill there, the only Bungu surviving round two. A good round for Thomas Mashaba. There's no question he wins the round. Opening round pretty even. Mashaba taking the second on our cards. <laughs> But that's what we play, okay? Just go up, go up, go up. And then we're going to try to But it's going, okay? If you want to do it, we can play the rest like that. Okay? Okay? It's okay. Okay? Yeah. Try right there, you see. Okay? 
Yeah, yeah. Some action yeah, from that second round, and it's a good, good round for Thomas Bashar with the challenger. Gunga uh, just not moving in all inside those but A lot of them have been taken on the gloves and the elbows, but there are quite a few that are uh, getting to. It's just the years of experience that Gunga uh, is just avoiding the, and taking the sting out of a lot of those punches. As we go into round two, scheduled 12, IBO featherweight title at stake. No good for Vianney Bungu though to be taking punches all evening. He's got to start dishing them out as well. Well, Nick, he's got to stay away from the shoulder. Let the shoulder uh, run down a bit. Yeah, but that's my question though. Uh, I, I wonder if the shoulder will run down. I mean, he can fight at this pace. And perhaps for 12 rounds too. That's what he's got to hope. But and in, fact, in fact, that's what he's banking on. He will this fight. But he can sustain it. Well, it's all Mishaba now just taking the fight to Bungu. Bungu coming back though in the middle of the ring there. Landing some new good shots to the body. He's a proud of the body he's behind a Bungu. Beautifully balanced uh, boxer of Vianney Bungu. Always in position to punch. Good head movement. Good defensive boxer too. Well, he's going to need his defense out tonight, Nick. Against uh, Mashaba. Good little work on the inside there from uh, Bungu. Working the body now. There's a little left hook here from uh, Bungu. Piling up the points now here in round three, Bungo. Good hook to the body scored by Bungo, and then a right hand to the head scored by Mashaba. That right hand to the head has got through uh, the guard of Vianney Bungo a couple of times already this evening. Those are the ones that uh, Bungo's got to be careful of. Shab has come to take a title, he's come to fight. <laughs> but he's not getting through as many punches here in round three as he did in round two. A better round here for the champion. Making, yeah. They're making the challenge a miss. Ken Bungu with that very educated head movement, making the shot a miss, as you say. to go the distance best. Go, some big shots please, coming please, in there from uh, Vianney Bunga. A good round for the champion. He really stunned the challenger there. As we go to round four of this uh, IBO featherweight title fight. Uh, Importantly for Mashaba though, he took those punches in that last round. Well, Nick, he's got the, he's got the stamina. Uh, he's a strong fighter. We've seen him take the best punches of most fighters. But he's extremely fit, this Thomas Mashaba. Starting again at quite a lively pace. Now, Bungu being 
backed up, but throwing some very good hooks to the body there. Right. He's digging in deep down beyond the bundle. Just showing the experience too. Well, he's going to need it with a man like Thomas Deschamps. They don't call him merciless Thomas Deschamps for nothing. This keeps coming at you. And he never stops it. This Bundu hasn't had to deal with this sort of pressure for quite some time. And this is the way Mishaba can fight round after round. Oh, lovely right hand to the body scored by Bionni Bungu. Right hand to the head scored by Mishaba. the question as the rounds go by how Bjorni Bungu's age is able to cope with this fight. He himself has always been a very fit fighter and a phenomenally low pulse rate at one stage of his uh, career. And he just asked the question, can the old legs take him through 12 hard rounds, Nick? Yeah, and they are going to be hard rounds by the looks of things. I mean, even though Thomas Deschamps is not landing all his punches, a lot of them are missing on the elbows, sliding off the side of the head. That, did, that didn't miss, that was a good right hand landed by Mashaba. But a lot of those punches do get in and they hurt. But he's out point punching Bungu at this stage of the fight, about 3-1 to one at the moment. When Bungu has to fight a smart fight, he's not going to throw as many punches. He has to, to make what he uh, does throw really count. Of course, he has the skill and the, the ring savvy to be able to do that. And he's going to need all his skill out tonight, Nick. He's up against him. Then the shot are coming on strong at the bell. Just looking at the fighters between rounds, Ron, uh, Bjorni Bungu breathing quite heavily in that corner, perhaps a little more so than Thomas Mishaba. Nick, a tremendous pace. I, I think he's fighting the wrong fight. I don't think he should fight at that pace. He's got to use a perimeter ring, stick and move. And uh, he's fighting Thomas Mishaba's fight as far as I'm concerned as we go into round five. Yeah. That's Bungu in the, the white trunks and Mishaba in those navy blue trunks. Thomas Mishaba reminding me a little bit of a young Bjorni Bungu, certainly the work rate and the ability to keep throwing punches. And uh, he digs those shots into the body, those are telling punches there from Mishaba. That's the right strategy he's using. Bungu gets a warning, just a little on the low side. I don't think they're intentional, though, it just happens. Shaman stops around, just outworking Bungu. Well, I, think, yeah, I just get the impression that he's stronger than Bungu, you know. And uh, dealing with the pace of the fight a little more comfortably at this stage. Bungu putting in the shoulder there, just trying to force Mashaba into a position where he can punch. Just no breather for Fiori Bungu in this fight, Ron. Well, you know, the punches just keep coming, he never stops uh, Mashaba. A lot of his punches don't get through, but he throws a lot of punches. Again, Bungu gets a warning for punching on the low side. The referee gets a bit excited, more excited than the fighters at the moment. The referee Richard Davies. IBO Red. This is the IBO Kettleway title, owned by Bungu at the moment.
Come on, really getting behind the clean punches that Bjorni Bungu throws. And you can already see, if Bungu hopes to win this fight, it's got to be by landing the cleaner punches. Because he's not going to be able to match the work rate of Thomas Mashaba, I don't think. Unless Mashaba really does run out of gas, which would surprise me. Bungu working to the body again. Again low. He's, he's, he might have a point sack there, right? Keep it up! One more time, and I think it's a point. by uh, Bungu. Working the body now, Bungu. A lot of body shots in this round are coming through from Bungu. Picking up his work rate a bit here at the bell is Bungu. Yeah. And has he done enough that around? Quite enjoyed it. tonight that Bunga picked up his work rate at the bell and may just have stolen the round. He had a good finish there, good right Look what happens, Nick. You know, the, the clever fighters, the, uh, they do this, you know. You very that man in picture, for instance. Sugar Ray Leonard against Bob and Hagler. He's the most famous example of a fighter stealing the late round, uh, stealing the rounds late in the round and, and winning the decision. Oh, yeah, that, that's the secret, you know. A lot of fighters can do that. We're into round six this uh, fight. It's been a good fight, an intense fight. Different to what I expected. I expected that uh, the only bull to get all his fights ago. But he's standing up to the shoulder and uh, giving him as much as he's taking. Shoba fighting from a southpaw stance. Shaba not uh, starting this round as briskly as he had the, uh, the previous couple. Uh, definitely the pace is tied down, Nick. But this is what Bungu wants. I think Bungu would be happier with a slightly slow paced fight. But I think this is a tactic side of Shaba. I thought he'd go take the fight to uh, Bungu early, pressurise him. It also came out as a southpaw to start this round. I'm not sure what that was about. Oh, good right hand scored by Mishala. And another one comes in from Mishala. Bunga's head movement is great though, isn't it? Um, he needs to keep moving that head too. Mishala on top of him at the moment. Nice little uppercut scored by Mishala. Uh, Mishala's coming on again now as you get into the... Uh, Last minute of this uh, sixth round. Sean has scored well with the right hand throughout the fight. Oh, good combination by Bungu. Staggered Mishala. He's a oh, tough customer, is Mashaba. Such a well coordinated fighter is Yoni uh, Bungu. Oh, that's all the years of experience, but yeah. boxing now as well at the stage of the fight. Going the sixth round, a good round for the champion. You can see it's no accident to how Yoni Bungu got to the top of the, the boxing tree. 
And has he got enough left to go 12 rounds with a man like Mashaba? Look at Mashaba, he's just merciless. Keeps counting. And a good round there for me. Bungu. Yeah, I thought the cleaner punching coming from Bungu. Maybe Mashaba's still throwing more punches, but the cleaner punching coming from Bungu. Close fight. I saw Mashaba there throwing a lot of punches, but as I say, I think the better punching came from Bungu in the fight. I wonder what he makes of it there on that uh, camera. We're into the seventh round, this is the second half of this uh, IBO featherweight title fight. Yoni Bungu is still there, and he's uh, giving as much as he's taking at the moment. He goes Mashaba. Second half of this fight is going to be tough if the first half is anything to go by. Exactly. Right hand to the body this time from Mashaba. He's just working the body now as uh, Bungu. Little, little ones to the body. as lips and rights to the body. Short little punches in. And then a jolting jab from Mashaba. Chavez just can't get his punches off. He's pushing now with those punches. He's got to step, take a step backwards to get the leverage of his punches. With the shoulder. Well, we're just going into a little bit of a shell at the moment. Well, he's taking a breather. He just can't find the right position to punch. I'm not sure. Well, another good little uppercut there from the shoulder. Shaba just piling it on now. It's there right in front of you. You don't have to look for Mashaba. Well, that's why I think Bjorn Bung has coped with the pace of the fight pretty well. I'm amazed, Dickard. He's just still there. He has a tremendous pace. Uh, the, fight, the fight has been fought out. If we were able to put out punch stats, they'd be favouring Thomas Vashava at the moment. He's taking a lot of punches, Thomas Vashava. He never stops. Just battles forward. The left and right's coming in from Vashava. Now, let's see if Bunga can pick it up at the end of the round again. Good left hook to the body, scored by the Beast. It is enough to do edge around. round. You see, he tries to match Vashava at the end of the round. He can't right. do it over the first half of the round. At the end of the round. Again, finishing right. strong with Johnny Bunga. Clever fighting. Is it impressing the judges? I hesitate to call this one at the moment, right? It's uh, still wide open as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, one of the men who can 
they are good. You can't wear a palm. Richie Davis just Come taking on. a look into Sorry. the corners of both fighters. Cut. Both accidental butts, okay? Well, he says that I'd say that both are cut, and they're accidental butts. Okay, well, you can come on, fellas. The shop is cut. The shop is cut, yes. Okay, I don't think Vianney's is cut. The stool. I can't see Vianney Bungu being cut, but the shop may have start cutting that left eye. Yes, I say, I didn't pick it up. No, not at all, Nick. But you know, they're fighting in close to the head, so it is possible that they happen with the head together. We're into the eighth round, you now. It's been a very tough, uncompromising fight, this. Well, I'm surprised, Nick. I never expected a fight like this for Bunga. I didn't expect him to fight at this pace. He, I think he surprised a lot of people, is beyond it, Bunga. Can he keep it going for another well, that's, rounds? Uh, that's, that's going to be the, 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 the answer. Those last uh, two or three rounds, that'll make all the difference. But uh, Rashaba missing a lot at the moment. Just he throws so many punches. Bunga up on his toes. <laughs> Leading with the right hand and landing. Well, as the, as the pace slows, it's much better for Bjorn Bungu, the older fighter. Well, I don't think Rashad will allow it to slow for very long, though. As I say, he's extremely quick. He can keep going. Well, he's got to keep the pressure on the champion, as Rashad. Bungu started this round a little more up on his toes. Good jab from Rashad. A lot of punches been thrown at the moment, but there are a lot of punches been missed at the moment by both fighters. Shaba punching short. Bungu punching short. Very few scoring punches coming through at the moment. Yes, the round uh, a little bit different from some of the previous rounds, where it was pretty much total to action. Good left hook score by Bungu, gets the crowd excited. This is Vintage Bungu at the moment. Those left and right's coming in from Vianne Bungu. Well, he's trying to outbox Michelle, but now he landed a good right hand there, did Bungu. Well, right up above us, uh, and a good punch, a scoring punch is coming through from uh, Bungu. A good round here for the champion. He does look better when he uses the perimeter of the ring, as you suggested, Ron, earlier. Well, I'm surprised he didn't start this earlier, Nick. Well, yeah. But it hasn't been his style through the years, but, uh, I mean, he's, he's good enough to adapt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in these situations where he's got his back to the ropes and Mashaba's punching that uh, I think Mashaba looks quite impressive. Well, well a very good round for uh, the only bull. Well, both fighters had their moments there. Good right hand at the bell scored by Mashaba. Into the ninth we go. It's been such a good fight, the rounds are just flying by. Well, I'm surprised, Nick. I never expected a fight at this pace. It's been a tremendous pace. And it's been a very, very good fight. Whatever happens, you a credit to both fighters. A little cut on the left eye there of uh, Thomas Mishaba. But I don't think it's a fact at the moment. <laughs> Thomas Mishaba in those uh, navy blue trunks. They look black now from all the water. Yoni Bungu in those white trunks. Bungu trying to match Mishaba for punches here at the start of the run. A lot of 
punch has been thrown by both fighters. No knockdowns in the fight thus far. Good right hand to the side of the head there, scored by Mashaba. Left hook to the body by Mashaba. Bungu straight down the pipe, a reply from him. Working that body as Mashaba, that's the right tactics. Referee Richard Davis warning there for the heads. But I think it's the style of both fighters coming forward. Something's going to happen there. It's inevitable the heads will clash. Again, Michelle was picking up the pace. So the Yanni Bunga is beginning to look a bit puffy around the eyes, Nick. I'm not surprised. Mashaba has landed some good clean right hands in this fight. I think Yanni Bunga's has taken more shots to the head in this fight than perhaps any fight in his career. Oh, definitely, uh, he slowed down, there's no doubt about that. Maybe that's just a sign to the age is, he's obviously starting to catch up with Yanni a bit. Um, his corner just implying him to get on the bicycle now. It's Mashaba just piling it on now. Left and right's coming in from Mashaba. Shaba finishing strong. A good round yeah, for the uh, challenger. Now Bungu's made a habit of trying to steal the round at the bell. He's going to have to stage quite a rally here because Mashaba's come on well. And that a good round is Mashaba. Big right hand on the inside from Mashaba. Is the pace beginning to tell for Yoni Bungu? Well, if it is going to tell, obviously it's in these championship rounds. Uh, good round there for the Shaba. Yoni Bungu returning quite slowly to his corner. The Shaba looks as if he can keep us up all night. Too much water down in that corner. Referee Richard Davies quite rightly wants that cleaned up. Dangerous in that corner. Find yourself outside the ring if you have a real skid on that. Done a good job of controlling the fight, I think, Richard Davies. A bit verbose, I'll try next time. Shouts a bit too much for my liking, but. Uh, but he stamped his authority on the fight. I think that's uh, really what a referee has to do. Playing into the hands of Bjorni Bungu. Oh, this is right, he needs the rest, Bjorni Bungu. <coughs> well, into round 10 yard now, and uh, can Bungu's legs hold out? This is the question that everyone's been asking. I think he's been up a fantastic fight up until the stage, Nick. No doubt about it. I think he's amazed everybody with his stamina and his conditioning, Bjorni Bungu. <coughs> but he, the ninth round, he's let Mashaba score with a lot of punches. Well, we've always known he's a class act. I was just a little worried he was an old class act. Yeah. 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 But, uh, these are the rounds that are going to count. <laughs> there can't be much in this fight. There comes that. Uh, the tape is coming off the. Uh, Again, it plays over the hands of Tom Rodin and Fabiani Bungu. Shaba would like to just keep the hammer down. See if we can get a 
that's all right, Robert Christ. Just join it, yeah? Is it? Is it? More about the fact that about the boxing at the moment. Yeah, it's quarter, and I won't tell you off for that. That's what to do. A little bit of a swing around the left eye. Oh, it's more than just a little swing. That's what it's like. A lump on the eye. Oh, yes, on the left eye. He's taken a few shots on that eye, Nick. Also! Continue boxing now in the tenth round. This fight's up for grabs. Who wants it most? Who, who's going to finish the stronger? Has we only when we've got the legs? It's been a grueling fight. Here. No let up from the first bell. Both fighters being in hammer and tongs. Bungu after the break looks revitalised. Yeah, there's been a few body shots in there from Bungu. And the shot we've got in a good uppercut there. That's a hit! That's a hit, Bungu! There's a shot! Flash of hits. Oh, there's a right hand scored by Bungu. The shot was just a little bit slow to recover from that clash of heads. Bungu made him pay. Well, both these fighters are going to come out the ring. They're going to be sore. Yes, tomorrow's going to be a day. It's been very quiet for I think. Good work for the body scored by Bungu again. I've been a good round now as we are Bungu. Oh, I think it was a good right hand there from the shot. Yeah, that just seemed to stop Bungu in his tracks. Yeah. This is uh, give and take. Bungu trying to up the cut through the middle. Left hook by the shot. Blood beginning to leak out of that left eye of the uh, cut over the left eye of uh, the shoulder. And then uh, Bungu with the damage over the left eye, the swelling over the left eye. So both fighters basically marked up at the moment. Crowd enjoying it. Nothing but admiration for these two at the moment. They're really are putting on a very good show here. Incredible performance by both fighters, Nick. Have a look at uh, first Mashaba. Then a good left hook applied by Bungu. Just sums up the fight, really. I think if I were to try and sum up the fight, I'd run up at Mashaba. Obviously, he's not a That's been the pattern of the fight. These are the scoring punches coming from Bungu. Again, Bungu uh, really Stop takes the full time. minute, isn't he, you on his stool. More water down in the corner. I think this is being done on purpose to give Bungu a break. Give him time. Yeah, it's a good play. Ripley Davies is falling yeah. for this at the moment. Well, you use all really? the tactics. You use all the tactics you can. Definitely giving Bungu a breather. It's broken the rhythm of Mashal in the last couple of rounds. That's what it's all about, Nick. I'm surprised the referee isn't a little more vocal about that. Do it one more time, they'll take a point. No, well, this is the 11th round now, and it's been a fascinating fight. It's been give and take. <laughs> well, anybody who thought that Mashaba would just get blown away by Bjorni Bungi has been uh, proved very wrong. Uh, he's done exceptionally well, Nick. <laughs> it's going to be a difficult one to score, you know, because uh, it depends how you read the fight, what you're watching. Uh, the cleaner, sharper punches, better punches from Bungu. The volume of punches from the Shaba. So who, who do you pick? And has the Shaba done enough to take the title from the champion as well? That's another question. But the only Bungu still here, against the odds, here in the 11th round, still punching out, throwing punches, matching the younger challenger. Yeah, he's been here for 18 years as a pro, and uh, he's just proving tonight that he wants to stay around for perhaps just a little mean? while longer. It's not going to be easy for him after such a grueling fight to get back into the ring, is it? Uh, if he does come out of winner. 
Mashaba. Bunga just trying to tap Mashaba. All the tricks coming from Bunga at the moment. Just trying to slow down the pace of this fight if he can. Well, he's got to do it. He's got to use his years of experience now. Corner helping in by dumping all that water between rounds. It's been an amazing fight. Give and take for 11 rounds yet. from that uh, left eye. Oh, good right hand scored by Bungu. Swiveled the head of Mashaba. And a straight jab down the pipe. Cleaner punches coming from Bungu. <laughs> well, I'm amazed at Bungu. This incredible performance here in the 11th round from Yoni Bungu. <laughs> Just must not get careless as Bungu. He's winning this round of Mark Hardwick. Yeah, a big round yet for Bjarne Bungo. The shot have got in a good left the hand. hand. He can't have too many other eyes at Bungo. Oh, that, that could have been more than that. That could have been more than that. It was a punch very effective. It was a punch. It was a punch. It wasn't all the knockdown, but it could have been. I think he slipped at the same time, but a punch came in very definitely. That was a good finish for Vianney Bungu. I think he needed it too. I had Mashaba, but this is just off the top of my head, not scoring the fight. Mashaba slightly ahead on points. Yeah. May well have, uh, I think Bungu's done enough to take it. Yeah, you may well be right too. I don't want to call this one. But uh, the thing is, it's in the hands of judges. It was a big, big round there for Vianney Bungu, round 11. Let's see if we can have a look at uh, what wasn't ruled a knockdown. Here we go. Bungu throws a right oh, hand. That was a right hand. That was a knockdown. To the side of the head. That was a knockdown. I think he may have thought it was a little bit too much with the open glove. The angle it landed, it could have been ruled a, a, a push, a shove to the canvas almost. But for me, it looks like a punch. Right, 12th and final round. Good sportsmanship between these two. I think a lot of respect now. Mashaba said he would make Bungu pay for being a boxer tonight. That's what he said to us on Punchline, and I, I guess to a certain extent he has done that. But I mean, you know, Bungu, 38 years old, Nick, I think he surprised everybody. Yeah, he's got an incredible a performance here by the 38 year old Bungu. He's fought a great fight. And he looks uh, as if he's got his second win now, too, as Johnny Bungu. I mean, his conditioning is amazing, Nick, and it's unbelievable. He hasn't quite matched Mishaba for work rate, but he's more than matched him for quality. Oh, but the difference is the, the quality of the punches and the target area, which a lot of the punches of um, Mishaba haven't hit the target area. Are oh, we going to get a big finish to this fight? And I'm amazed that both fighters that have been throwing punches from the first ball have never stopped. The pace has been tremendous. Look how fresh Mashaba looks. Look how fresh oh, Bungu looks too. Bungu seems to have replaced He's leaking blood now, that right eye Bungu is leaking blood now. Yeah, that's just happened. No, that's that's right. a nasty that's cut. A cut. Yes. That is a nasty cut. I'm wondering if that was the cash of his. But uh, I think Bungu's fought the fight of his life, Nick. Quite an incredible performance here by the Arnold Bungu. He's had many great lose. fights. One or lose, uh, he's fought a great fight. The show we can see the blood. We're going to the last minute of this uh, 12th round of the IBI Championship. Featherweight Championship at stake here. The Arnold Bungu defending his title. An outstanding performance here by the veteran. I would say the Shabba's tired, tiring in the last couple of rounds. Bungu's the, the fitter man of the two. He's not throwing as many punches as he did earlier, the Shabba. Well, the, the Colombian knock 
cut now. Again, into the 12th and final round. Seconds to go. The, the great performance here by Vianney Bunga, the RBA champion. What a great fight between two very worthy fighters. Really came to fight. Applause from Dingo de Bella. He knows what it takes to fight like that. More than anybody, perhaps, in this uh, marquee tonight. So it will go into the hands of the judges. Look at Vianney Bunga, he's exhausted as well. The neck an amazing performance by a 38 year old boxer. And nobody expected this. He went into the late rounds, they thought Bunga would lose. And uh, it's been a great fight, an outstanding fight. Michelle Camp feels he's done enough to take the decision. I think uh, a fight like this is quite safe to sit on the fence, really. I would say, but if I didn't give it, his, uh, I would say Bunga's done enough to retain the title. Uh, I'd favour him, but I could be so wrong. It's in the hands of our three judges, Melbourne Cross, Aubrey Erasmus and Len Hunt, all from South Africa. <laughs> Those last couple of rounds could have been decisive in Bunga's favour because he... Uh, he seemed to come up quite nicely. His corner helped him, obviously. There were a couple of breaks in the 10th round, which played into the hands of Vianney Bunga. But 10, 11, and 12, Bunga was uh, more than holding his own with Mashaba. I, I, I thought that's where Bunga would fade to the well, younger that, man. That's, that's what I thought, Nick. But Mashaba tended to fade, and that, that was the difference. Possibly those rounds are going to make all the difference to Vianney Bunga. Oh, Hawk Makapula. Yes, he is. I was about to say he's not giving away much, but I think that was to Vianney Bunga there. To tell him, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you've done it. Tell you what, you're a brave man inside this marquee to uh, bet against you. Okay, <laughs> that's for sure. 99% of the people here are in favour of Bungu. <coughs> Referee saw a very good fight. I thought he handled it pretty well, although that knockdown could have been called a knockdown. Right, right. But it um, was, was a little bit of an open glove to... Crowd certainly got their money's worth. Was it? A hard, grueling fight, Nick. I didn't expect a fight like that. I expected Bunga to stick and move, but he stood there toe to toe with the Shaba right throughout. And uh, all credit to both fighters. Uh, a standing performance here by both fighters. A very, very good fight. I would say if the only Bunga has won the fight, that he will be around a little while longer still, right? Uh, Nick, I'd like to see him give it up today. There's definitely uh, signs of age there, uh, even though he fought very well tonight. Uh, I think it's time to get it up. I can't beat uh, the aging legs for too long. He's a breadwinner though for the family too, and not easy to walk away from the sport. Possibly, not easy. But uh, just look at the lump on the side no, of the uh, uh, left eye, and then of course right. the cut, the cut over the, the right eye. Yeah. Shaba had a cut on the left eye, but none of the cuts were a factor. You know? Because they were fighting toe to toe, it's understandable that the bump heads at times, uh, and I think this is what happened. But. Uh, Bit of a conference there going on with the scores. It's going to be interesting what they come out with. And old adage too that a challenger really should take the uh, title from a champion in a close fight. He seemed to have taken the title. I thought at one stage it was going in that direction. But I thought Tungu rallied well. Well, he pulled it back, Nick. I thought he did very, very well. You know? As our ring announced, there's more people in the ring than outside the ring at the moment. But, uh, as our ring announcer from Ron MCB got the decision, you can feel the uh, tension in this uh, arena while we wait for the decision. Either way, I would say it's got to be a close uh, call, isn't it, with the judges? I can't see any wide margins here. I'm very surprised. From Ron, he's got the decision. Just keeping us in suspense just a while longer. Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of exciting boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Leonard Hans scores the fight 112-117. Judge Aubrey Erasmus scores the fight 114-114.
116. And Judge Melvin Claus scores the fight. 113-116 in favor of the winner and the new IPO featherweight champion Thomas Masilasi well, Mashaba! elation for Thomas Mashaba. I didn't see it like that. Nick, I'm surprised. Absolute elation for Thomas Mashaba. The marquee's gone quite quiet Stunned. comparatively. Stunned, you know. I don't think we already deserved that. I must be honest. I thought he'd edge it, but uh, be that as it may. Uh, the judges showed like that, we've got to accept it. Impressed with the work rate of Mashaba. Mashaba. I'm, 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 that, that's an influence the judges. But, I must you know. say, going into 10, I had Mashaba slap their head on points, but uh, not, uh, by, not by uh, quite uh, as wide a margin as uh, one or two of the judges. No, the thought. judges are too wide, Nick. I, I felt the five points are far too wide. I felt uh, the only thing we did enough to, to edge it, but uh, be as it may, that's my opinion. Maybe I was a sentiment, Nick, you know. Yes, and I think there was uh, a lot of sentiment, sentiment here, yeah, but yeah, I think it was a great fight right, by the only thing as no, well. No doubt, they put up a great performance, you know. So we have a new champion, new yeah, champion. Yeah. Not everybody yeah, happy yeah. about it out of the ring, I must add. Tomlani yeah, yeah. will have a word with both fighters and we'll get a better feel for what they thought about the fight. Well, after 12 rounds of boxing, Thomas, you are now two-time champion. Congratulations, Bossi Amin. Thanks, Prapumu. Uh, I want to thank you for the time. I don't know what to do, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, but I don't know what to do. So, I don't know what to do, but I don't know what to do. Okay, I can talk to you now. Thank you very much, Thomas. Eugene, you guys came to our studios at Punchline. You were very confident of dethroning the beast. Oh, really? I must say, the beast, you are great, my friend. I never thought you were going to put such a fight. You are still there. But uh, this is the young man who need to be take notice. Kumlana say to you, bring any fight, bring any fighter who is a featherweight or junior featherweight in South Africa, we'll take him into pieces. Because uh, people don't regard us. We are going to fight for recognition. We are going to fight for everything. Chill people say, Mashaba is the best. Thank you very much, this trainer, Eugene Kanyele. Vito, you prepared, you came here tonight. You had a couple of problems, uh, bereavement in the family coming into this fight. You fought two or three different fight strategies here tonight, sometimes on the inside, sometimes on the outside. Uh, Pumran, what can I say? Um, firstly, I must uh, thank God for the strength and the courage uh, he gave me for this fight. Uh, I, uh, I was fully prepared for this fight, Pumran. As you have seen the fight, uh, I've done all the things that I was supposed to do. Uh, mine is to fight, you know, the judges, so the other way around. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I've been in this business for so many years. What can I say? I've done my job well, you know, so I'm, I'm, very, I'm very okay uh, about my, uh, my performance tonight. Talking about you having done basically everything in boxing, how much more do you think is left in this sporting video? Uh, Pumlani, you know, I think I showed this boy that uh, I might be uh, 38 years old, but I've got a body of a 28 years old boy. And uh, I've shown this boy right, right now. And I, wa I want to say uh, to my people here in, in the Buffalo City, uh, thank you for the support you've been giving me all these years. And uh, I want to recognize as well all the dignitaries uh, for coming in this fight tonight. Uh, our mayor, of the province and, and, and other dignitaries who are here tonight. Uh, what can I say about my, my promoter, uh, my manager, uh, Bramzi? Uh, I want to thank him for everything he did uh, ever since I started with him as, a, as, a, as an amateur. Uh, what about uh, my team here, Mr. Andy Lebagbagu, Vele Luluzipo, Tutu Bungu, and all other gentlemen who work with me. And uh, I, don't want, uh, I don't want the people to, to charge this fight. They must take it as it is. This is boxing. Is Vianney Pungu going to retire? Uh, Pumlani, I cannot, uh, I cannot answer that question right now because, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional Pumlani and uh, if I, I can take a decision right now, it will be an emotional decision. I have to go, uh, go home and sit down and think and, and talk about my manager. 
Thank you very much. That is Vianney Pungo, the e e former IPO featherweight champion. E Ladies and gentlemen, from me, Pumlan Msiba, I'll take you back to our commentators at ringside. Well, Nick, that was it. There's all the results. I just want his Sure. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat now. <coughs> Stop. Sorry, ass bitch. Girl. I don't want you to marry him. I'm telling you. I have the to tell her not to marry him. Girl, I know you're not scared of me, but I ain't scared of you either. Okay, wait, wait. Before the music uh, starts, let's bring thing. out, let's bring out uh, the man in in the middle of these three men. Ryan.